The James Webb Telescope might soon focus on two super-Earths that are so near to their star. What if Earth were significantly closer to the Sun? So near that a year on the planet would only last 18 hours. Humanity, as we recognize it, wouldn't exist. But what circumstances might live in such a world as it evolved? The James Webb Telescope will soon discover the answer. Today's video will offer you insight into JWST's first image that will capture Super-Earth. The James Webb Telescope is about to transmit back its first full-color picture from 15 million kilometers away. About six months after it was inaugurated from French Guiana on a gloomy day. On July 12th, 2022, the Airborne Observatory is going to send back its first picture and spectroscopic data. After approaching the second Lagrange point L2 earlier in 2021, Webb is nearing the end of the scientific creation stage and has been prepping its hardware before it can begin research work, calibrating its instruments to their space environment and positioning its mirrors. In a statement, Webb program scientist Eric Smith remarked that they are all on the cusp of an enormously exciting moment of discovery about our cosmos as they finish prepping the observatory for science. Webb's first full-color photographs will provide a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to pause and wonder at a vision that humanity has never seen before. However, one most challenging activity has been reaching an agreement on the first target to be seen by the world's most powerful observatory. NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, the CSA, and the European Space Agency, the ESA, as well as the Space Telescope Science Institute collaborated for more than five years to choose the target. The first photos and spectroscopic observations will be taken when Webb's instruments have been calibrated, tested, and granted the green light by its scientific and engineering crews. Webb project scientist Klaus Pantopeden stated that Webb's initial photographs and data aim to highlight the telescope's formidable sensors and preview the research mission. In addition, they'll give astronomers and the general public the long-awaited shock they've wanted. To put Webb's formidable powers to use, the team is going to have to go through a target or a hit list that has already been pre-selected and prioritized by an international committee. In addition, the telescope's susceptible lenses have already demonstrated their capacity by seeing a test star to adjust its mirrors. Thousands of old galaxies could be seen in the photograph because it was clear. The lineman picture has already revealed Webb's infrared views unrivaled clarity. However, predicting how the initial photos are going to appear, yeah, it's tricky. Of course, there are elements they expect and hope to find. Still, with a robust watch and this new high-resolution infrared information, they won't know until they see it. According to a senior science graphics developer, Joseph De Pasqua, according to NASA, Webb is going to also capture spectroscopic data, which astronomers can interpret in light. The early cosmos, the evolution of galaxies over time, the lifetime of stars, and other worlds are among these science subjects that inspired the mission. They will become the focus of its work in the first picture package of material. The scientific group behind the telescope has set a lofty goal of studying the geology of these minor planets from 50 light years away, according to a statement released on May 26th. The work will be a significant test for the new observatories, which is expected to be completed within a few weeks. Due to the more minor planets' comparative brightness adjacent to a star and their comparatively small size, rocky planets seem more challenging to see with telescope equipment than gas giants. On the other hand, Webb might be able to study two planets somewhat more significantly than Earth, termed super-Earths because of their strong mirror and deep space position. Although none of these worlds are livable in the way that we know anyways, exploring them might serve uh, as a test for future in-depth investigations of planets like ours. The super-hot lava-covered 55 Cancri E and LHS 3844b, which lack a significant atmosphere, are the two planets emphasized by Webb authorities. 55 Cancri E circles its parent star at a close distance of 1.5 million miles, or 2.4 million kilometers, roughly 4% of the distance separating Mercury and the Sun. As a result, the planet possesses a blast furnace surface temperatures exceeding the melting point of any of these types of rocks circling its star just once every 18 hours. Scientists have also presumed that the exoplanet is tidally locked to the lead, which means that one side of the planet constantly faces the searing sun. At the same time, studies from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope show that the hottest zone may be slightly offset. According to scientists, the offset's heat might be caused by a thick atmosphere that can transfer heat about the globe or lava raining at night, which removes excess heat. 
Moreover, the lava from the night implies a day-night cycle that might be owing to a 3-2 resonance, or three spins for every two orbits, that we find on Mercury inside of our solar system. Two teams will check these hypotheses, one led by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Ren Yu Hu, which will look for signs of environment in the planet's thermal emissions, while the other, headed by Alec Randicker, will an associate professor from Stockholm University, would therefore measure heat transmittance from the lit side of 55 Cancri E. LHS 3844b is likewise a near orbiter, rotating once every 11 hours around its parent star. On the other hand, the principle is smaller and colder than the 55 Cancri E. As a result, the planet's surface is anticipated to be significantly colder, and Spitzer's observations have revealed that the world has no major atmosphere. Spitzer's findings show that the planet is unlikely to possess a significant atmosphere. Unfortunately, due to the lack of obscuring atmosphere, it's not feasible to picture the surface of LHS 3844b immediately with wet. Still, it is possible to investigate its surface using spectroscopy. Employing spectroscopy is done by a group led by astronomer Laura Kriedberg at Max Planck Institute for Astronomy. It hopes to capture a surface signal, comparable to how our eyes might sense changes in color across rocks owing to the visible light they bounce. Infrared lights that stones emit has similar distinctions. Various wavelengths of light indicate multiple elements. The thermal excitation wavelength of the day side of LHS 3844b will be captured using Webb's mid-infrared instrument. It is then compared to rocks such as basalt and granite to see whether a surface composition can be determined. The two projects, according to Kriedberg, will provide us with tremendous new insights on Earth-like planets in general, allowing us to understand more about what the early Earth would have been like, while it was hot, like these planets are now. These two exoplanets categorized as super-Earths are among the observations scheduled for the telescope's one year. The lava-covered 55 Cancri E and the atmosphereless LHS 3844 B. Because of their size and rocky nature, they are categorized as super-Earths. Scientists will use these two worlds to train Webb's high-precision spectrographs and learn more about the geologic variety of planets around the galaxy and the development of a rocky planet like ours. In addition, in contrast to 55 Cancri E, LHS 3844b will provide a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study solid rock on an extraterrestrial surface. However, because its star is tiny and cold, the exoplanet's texture is not heated enough to melt. Webb is presently completing final commissioning operations, such as tracking solar system targets and changing between hotter and cooler altitudes to evaluate the mirror and sensor alignment. The $10 billion observatories are expected to complete their commissioning at June end, or July, and begin the first cycle of observations shortly after. What do you feel about the JWST usage for capturing the first super-Earth images? Let's talk about it in the comments. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell, all that fun YouTube stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one, I guess, right?